Hello, welcome to the key binding and menu management guide. Hopefully there will be some useful tips on this tutorial. Let's get started. The first change you can do here is the run type between toggling and holding. Difference is, when you have it on hold, you have to hold your run button all the time when you want to run. And if you let go, you start walking instantly. The other option, toggle. Is basically you just need to tap the run button and it will run until you stop. Sometimes if you bump corners you will also go back into a walking animation. So you still want to hold shift sometimes when you run even on toggle. Personally I like having it on toggle because if I run this game for long periods of time and I have my run button on shift for example it starts to hurt my little finger if I have to do it for longer periods of time. So to toggle, I can just have a little bit less strain on my little finger when I run this game. Let's go over the key bindings. At the moment they are set to default key bindings, but I will show how I like to have them when I run this game. You also can't have any conflicting key bindings or not bound key bindings, otherwise the changes won't save. To begin with, I like to have interact buttons on Q and E. I have the switch ammo type on F. It's only for casual play, you don't really need this when you're speedrunning this game. The next button we change. is uh, change the confirm menu buttons. This you want to have the same as your uh, interact buttons here. Next, I like to have my closing the menu button on spacebar. Switching tabs and conflict with the confirm menu buttons. So we have it on one and three. We need these late into the game. We still want to have these bound in reasonably easy to use buttons. Also, we need to change the quick turn button. You don't need this when you're speedrunning this game, so just put it far away as possible. So since we have these 1 and 3 conflicting with these other key bindings here, we're gonna change these to 9 and 0. 9 and 0. We don't really need this for anything, so just put them to whatever you feel like. The last thing we will be changing is the move item in the item box. I have this in right click and B. Alright. The last thing I like to do is to clean up a little bit couple of the bindings that are close to positions I could accidentally click. Because I don't want to do any accidental usage of key bindings if I don't want to. For example, we have reload on the side mouse buttons. I don't really need reload and ready sub weapon. I don't really want to use this on the mouse. I'm just going to remove this all. The next one. Let's see. Reset camera button is on the middle mouse. I don't want to reset the camera mouse positioning at all. Also, all this kind of close by. So I'm going to change this both to somewhere far away. So, okay. Let's see. There we go. That works. Anything that you won't accidentally click. Open a map. Control is sometimes it's close to shift and sometimes you could accidentally open up a map. And when you have your map open you still lose game time. So you don't want to ever have a map open up accidentally. So let's just remove that. Alright, let's move on to the actual reasonings why I have the game spawned this way. Good things to know. In this game there are a couple key bindings that are hard-coded into the game. For example, left click and enter are always a confirm button, even though they are not bound anywhere. We can use this fact in a couple of situations in game as well. Benefits of double inputs. Instant heal usage, E and Q. Instant item swap. E and Q. Instant banking. 
and Q, E and Q, E and Q, E and Q, and E and Q. Also taking items out of bank, E and Q, E and Q, E and Q, E and Q, and E and Q. Faster ride and pickups. Triple inputs for fast item usage. Q, E and enter. Two things to know. Player pickup range is larger on the right side than it is to the front. For example, if I try to pick this first edge spray now, I cannot do it because I'm not in range. But the more I start turning away, the pickup range increases. I can even look a little bit backwards and I can still grab the item. As you can see. But still, if I'm fading, facing towards the item, I can pick it up. Good to know, sometimes when you're running past items, you wanna instead run sideways next to the item and pick it up because you have a longest range instead of running directly at the item, stopping up and then keep it going on. So you don't lose your straight line to your next objective. When it comes to arranging your items, you want to try to have your first four slots here as shown to be reserved for key items, especially items that will disappear after you use them, because it will give more space afterwards for the next key items, yeah? In a case like this. So for the next part we still have these three slots for key items. Also we already have one key item here that still can be used. There is two ways to move items in inventory. You can just hover over the item, or left click, drag it over wherever you want. Or there's a key binding, the key binding settings, move item. So for example, I have it on right click, so I can just right click, then wherever I want to move it, I just left click again, or do my confirm, which is E, to move it. Both work, dragging. And using the right click, for example. The benefits of dragging it can be faster if you're really quick at it. Because you don't have to, you just need to hold left click and let go. Obviously, right click and left click can also be done really fast, so the benefit isn't that big, right? But using the key binding just makes less room for errors. For example, if you just drag, you accidentally misplace, let go, you're screwed, right? But in case, if you use the key binding, you can right click, and you can make sure you're on the right sp spot, then click it, so you move it exactly on the right spot instead. You can only use keyboard as well to move items on inventory. You just bind the move item to a keyboard, then press the button, I have it on V, so press V, and then I just move over the item I want to swap with it and press confirm which is E that's it this is good if you're more comfortable using keyboard only you want to avoid swapping placements in inventory when you pick up items there's delay afterwards of menu closing down Instead, you want to find a way to manipulate your inventory in a way that your item will be placed on the right spot without having to swap them around. When it comes to picking up items, we try to minimize picking up items into a stack because there's a little longer delay before the menu closes after we pick up an item. For example, we have pistol bullets here in our inventory, but if we pick up more now, the menu closes a little bit slower. Here is the same thing, but without having the pistol bullet in our inventory. Here is the side by side comparison. 
when you're playing the game, you want to open your menu as few times as possible. When you have to open it, you want to do as many things at once as you need to. For example here, when we open up our menu, this should be the first time as Claire and you access the menu. You want to move this, you want to discard this. This also opens and opens up the first slot for the bolt cutters. So, it should work out good. Since we know that mouse is hard-coded into the menu inputs, you can still use mouse here even though it's not found on the menus. This gives us a little bit of added benefit on some of the puzzles. For example here, you need to do, with a couple of these, we need to do more than one turn, right? For example this one, you need to do three rotations. But at the moment we have E and Q which are both bound to as an interact button but also since mouse is hard coded we can do three inputs at once to rotate this three times instantly like this this will be even faster than doing it three times clicking it slowly like one two three instead just clicking three time three buttons at once and have the rotation to go through instantly It's good to get used to practicing discarding. You wanna use keyboard when you discard items. With my key bindings, it's quite simple. Whenever you want to discard, you just do E, W, E, W, E. And obviously, with time you can get this a lot faster. It's always good whenever you run dice to just discard your items just for sake of practice as well. This is a little bit of an extra thing, just because if you've bound the key bindings the way I have, there's gonna be a little bit of a change to the normal signal modulator uh, inputs. So for example here, we wanna switch the MERF, we actually have to use 1 instead of Q, that it, it would be by default. But it's, everything else is the same, so we do 1, DSSS, we get the MERF, and when we have to back get to OSS next, that's gonna be 3 SA. And you can do these inputs. You can press all these inputs as once to get multiple inputs down as well. In these codes. So you can press all 3 SA at the same time. To get to OSS. If you enjoy this content, leave a like, subscribe and follow me on Twitch for more content. Thank you for watching.